In this video, we're gonna cover off some of the frequently asked questions I get about converting a V8 P6 to five speed. We've got the original four speed from the P6. Unfortunately, we can use none of that. On our model right here, we have two LT77 five speeds. Doesn't really matter where the LT77 comes from, as long as it's from a rear wheel drive vehicle, i.e. two wheel drive Rover or Triumph TR7, not a Land Rover gearbox. If you get a box from a V8, it will already have the correct bell housing. If you get one from a straight six, 2.6, you know, 2600, 23 SD1, TR7, five speed, it'll have the wrong bell housing, but bell houses are interchangeable. So you're gonna buy a V8 bell housing, whether you buy a used one or a reproduction from Rimmers. Point to note here is that a lot of people ask me about the TR7 box. Internally, it's basically the same as the rest. And probably, given it's a smaller, lighter car, with the least powerful engine in the range, chances are that the TR7 box has actually got less wear than any box out of a SD1. We're currently under the P6, and here's the transmission tunnel. If you are converting an automatic, you're in luck, because it's an easier job, because the automatic tunnel is wider and taller, and it's a much easier fit. If it's manual, you've got a bit of work cut out. Even the forcing in the gearbox is a very tight fit in a P6 tunnel, particularly around here. A lot of people resort to beating, them up, beating the tunnels up with a hammer. You don't need to do that. What makes it a lot easier is if you have a long bar and you just gently lever between the exhaust manifold and the chassis rail, just to push the engine over slightly, you'll find the box will come out much, much easier. So whilst we don't actually need to do anything to the tunnel in this area to fit the five speed, if our car was manual, then we do need to make some modifications to the tunnel. So to fit the five speed, we need to trim away some of the stiffener, some of the original gearbox mount, because the five speed is particularly bulky in this area. So we did trim a bit away on most of that bit there. And we also need to widen the tunnel slightly here. What we normally do with them is we use a hydraulic jack, but essentially you need to put a jack in there and just spread the tunnel slightly and a little bit more of a dent there. And that is all you need to do to the tunnel to make the box fit. Even with the tunnel mods, this box is still a tight fit. But if you remove this bolt here, it makes getting the box in and out a lot easier. You can put the bolt back in afterwards. Once the box is up in the hole, the bolt goes in. This is the original P6 gearbox mount. No use. It doesn't fit the five speed. Instead, you'll have to fabricate something. I believe this mount is fabricated from a TR7 mount, but I've seen loads and loads of different variations. Most people will make a mount up out of what they've got. While I'm down here, I might as well talk about speedos. P6 speedo cable does not fit the LT77 box. The early SD1 cable may fit because you can use an early SD1 speedo, the Series 1 SD1 speedo, you could use that in the P6 dash. But certainly the later one, the cable might fit the box, but it does not fit the P6 dashboard. We get round it, I make a hybrid, I convert LT77 speedo drive to take a P5B angle drive, and then we use a long P5B speedo cable. That's how we do it. I'm sure there's other ways. While I was under the car just now, I pointed out the area that is tightest, clearance to the body. To that end, we remove some material from the bell housing. It was a bit wider there. So we just slam it down and makes it easier to get the box in and out. Not strictly necessary, but we also notch a bit off the lump or the corner. That corner was originally square like that. We lop it off. Again, it makes it a little bit easier getting the box in and out. Inside the bell housing is a pivot. It's what the clutch fork pivots on. There are at least three different lengths. You need a V8 one. So if you didn't buy a box from a V8, you need a V8 one. Simply screws in there. Whether your gearbox came from a four cylinder, a six cylinder or a V8, the clutch fork it's the same. Here we have a release bearing on its carrier, release bearing and carrier. Now this is a short one as used in the TR7 and the 2600s. For the V8, you need a longer one. I did have one, but I've seemed to have mislaid it. So James, that's a short one. Put up a picture of a long one. Having said you need a long V8 release bearing carrier, there is another option. Rimmers and probably a few others also do adapter, which presses onto there and then you put your bearing on and effectively makes your release bearing longer, suitable for the V8. In terms of clutch, you need to change it. The LT77 has an inch 23 spline 
not the core supply of the P6. 3.5 clutches are actually fairly good. They will take a fair power increase. But I can tell you from experience, if at the same time you're upgrading your gearbox, you're fitting a 4.6 by an uprated clutch. The standard 3.5 cannot cope with the torque of a 4.6. And from a mechanical aspect, nearly the last component is the prop shaft. The LT77 is longer than the P6 one. You need a different length prop. Fortunately, the shorter automatic prop is the perfect length for fitting a five-speed gearbox. And here we have a rear view of the installed gearbox. You'll note that to the left, you've got the angle drive for the speedo gear, which just about clears the sides of the transmission tunnel. Now we've trimmed away some of the reinforcing webbing and you can see the two bright shiny spacers, which are tubes we fabricated to account for the height difference between the P6 cross member and LT77 Triumph cross member that we cut down and used. Once you've done your five-speed conversion, the Speedo will be a work of fiction. I think on my car, it reads around 20 miles an hour slow. You've got a couple of options. GPS Speedo, phone, sat nav. Just make a note that it reads slow, or the Speedos can be recalibrated. It's a case of take the instrument out and send it away to Speedy Cables, who can recalibrate it to suit. Gear lever, the P6 gear lever doesn't fit the LT77 box, a normal LT77 gear lever drop straight in and works. If you're a dab and you can even convert them. On my own car, my gear lever is a hybrid. So it's an LT77 bottom end and a P6 top end. So from inside the car, it still looks correct. Some people want original looking, others aren't so bothered. Those are all, as I see it, the major sticking points, the biggest number of questions, probably the technically the most difficult bit is actually engineering the rear gearbox mount. But it's not actually that difficult. The last one we did for this car, we cut down cross member from a TR7, used some spacers about that long and some long bolts just to join it all up. That aspect of every conversion is different. So it's a case of getting the box in and measuring up and seeing what you can make out of what you've got. So if you're interested in the Rovers, James put up a link for our Rover playlist. Like, share, subscribe, and we'll bring you some more.